Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Flight Sim Builder's GNS 530 review, part two, coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back everyone. Before we get started in today's video, I just have one disclaimer. Flight Sim Builder did send me the GNS 530 for review, However, I am not being paid for my review and all the opinions about the GNS 530 are mine and mine alone. If you missed part one of the series, I'll post links down below or you can click up here. In part one, we focused on the hardware portion of the GNS 530. In today's video, we will focus on mounting the GNS 530 to the mount. We will also connect it to our PC, download the software from Flight Sim Builder, and see if we can get this integrated with Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you have any comments or questions along the way, or if there's something you would like to see specifically about the GNS 530, post it down below in the comments section and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoy today's content, be sure to hit that subscribe, tickle on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. All right, so now let's get the GNS 530 mounted to the mounting plate. I'm also going to be using the instructions. I printed out a copy. I will also overlay a copy of that so you can see exactly what I'm reading. Now, if you watch part one of the series, you'll know this came in a little bit bent, so I tried to get it uh, squared up as much as I could. So looking at these instructions, it says the first thing we need to do is unscrew four screws on the back and remove the back cover. Now keep in mind there are two versions of this installation guide. One is if your GNS 530 already comes pre-mounted, which mine didn't, or the second version when they're coming separately and you're going to be mounting it. So if we take a look at the back of the GNS 530, it says that we need to unscrew four screws on the back and remove the back cover. I'm going to show this to everyone and I'm going to zoom in here. Hopefully it comes through. But as you'll see, there is no screws on the back of the GNS 530. So now you have to keep that in mind when we're reading the rest of this, because I'm assuming that they're talking about the four nuts that are on the studs on the back of the GNS 530. Before I actually perform any of these steps, I want to read through these real quick just so you can get a feeling of what I'm going through when I'm reading this. So after we remove the four screws on the back and remove the back cover, now we have to unscrew four side screws, two on each side from your unit. Now if we take a look at this unit, there are four side screws on each corner of the GNS 530 but the instructions don't say to remove all of those screws. It just says unscrew four screws. That's hard to understand. Are they talking about, do we need to unscrew four screws total? So two here and two here, or are they talking about two here and two on this side? Step three is we need to unscrew two screws on the bottom close to the front this will interfere with the honeycomb mount screws if not removed. Secure the mount to the honeycomb. Unscrew two screws on the bottom close to the front. There's no screws on the bottom other than these, but there's four of them. So are they talking about these two screws? And I don't understand how they would interfere with the honeycomb though. That, that's why this is so confusing to read this. And then it goes in to say, unscrew the four top screws on your honeycomb yoke. That's pretty self-explanatory. And then attach the mount to your honeycomb yoke or throttle using the above four screws that you took out. Lastly, we're going to screw back the four side screws, two on each side. I don't know which ones they are. Through the mount to mount your unit. Attaching the nuts from another side might be a little tricky. Maybe they mean the other side. I really wish they would have added some pictures into this. I did find on their website that they have a YouTube video for the G1000. So I thought, well, hey, maybe the G1000 is kind of the same way and we have to attach it the same way. Well, when I clicked on the video, it said the video was private and I couldn't watch it. So that was a dead end. In any case, step number eight, 
we have to replace the two bottom corners with provided nutless corners. They will attach with nuts, one the bottom, but do not need nuts on the side, thicker sides. It doesn't make any sense to me. They're words, but it's just a bunch of words put together that don't, I don't understand what it means. Step number nine is screw back the four side screws, two on each side, through the mount to your unit. I hope everybody was following along here while I was reading these instructions. I'm sorry my attention was at the paper here, but I was really trying to make heads or tails of the instructions, which I've already read probably 10 times. So if you're a little bit confused, well, that makes all of us. So let me see if we can make this a little bit simpler of an installation with the items that they gave us here. Now, one thing that I will know is that when this is installed in the mount, it's going to be very difficult to get the screws here into the Bravo. So I think what I'm going to do is attach this to the Bravo first and then mount the 530 to the mount. But before I go through that and try to attach that to the Bravo, which I know that will fit already because I've tested, let's take the four nuts off of the back of the 530 and see if there's anything else here that I'm missing. I really would have liked to have seen a little crescent wrench in with this kit here. It would just make it a little bit easier. They do give you an Allen, but no wrench. This will also give us a chance to look inside the unit and see what kind of hardware is inside. Be careful, this is machined very close. This is what we have on the inside of the GNS 530. Step number two is telling us to unscrew four side screws, two on each side from the unit, and keeping the nuts. So I'm assuming they are talking about these little brackets in here, um, these little corner brackets with these nuts. I'm assuming that's what they're talking about. They're not telling us which four to do and why we need to do that. Now, one other thing that I notice in here that these little 90 degree brackets that are inside, these are 3D printed. So if you do remove these screws and retighten, make sure you don't over tighten these because it will crack that 3D print. So let's go about this a different way. So in my opinion, I think if we remove these back nuts over these studs, these will then fit over and then sandwich the mount in between this front lip of the GNS 530. I've also gotten some washers here to put over top of these screws and that'll help even out the pressure when you're tightening them down. Because again, these are 3D printed so you don't want to tighten them too much. One thing I would have probably liked to have seen um, on the bottom of these, you can see right where the hole is. I'll try to zoom in here. They don't have much material built up on the one side of the top side of this hole. So what that's going to do is that's going to be a weak point when you're tightening this down. I would have liked to have seen maybe three more millimeters of material here so that these will not get broken. We slide this through here now. We take one of these, a little washer, and it leaves perfect enough room for a nut. Yeah, so it looks like what I'm thinking here is going to work just fine. So if you take a look at that, you will see that's kind of how it's going to look on this mount here and sandwich the mount between that 3D print. So now that I know that's going to work, let me mount the actual metal mount to the Honeycomb Bravo and then we will attach the GNS 530 to that. All right, so I've already taken out all the screws in the top of my yoke and if we set our mount on top of here now, all four screw holes do line up on top. Now they did give us some of these thumb screws and I'm assuming that these are gonna be good for if you have the Logitech radio stack that you want to screw this to. All right, so the mount is secure. Uh, let's go ahead and get the 530. We'll pop that in there and then we'll attach all of the mounts. If you do use washers on this, just be careful that they do not fall because it's kind of a tight space. So that's how these are gonna get put on. I'm going to speed through the remainder of this and get the bottom ones put on and tightened down.
All right, so I got all the brackets attached to the back of the GNS 530. Let me show you exactly what it should look like. I'm not sure if you can see in the picture, you probably can. There's a slight gap between the actual bracket here and the back of the 530. And that's why you gotta be very careful when you tighten these down because it could just crack that mount there. Okay, so now I'm gonna tighten up all of these and then what we're gonna do is connect everything up to the PC. For that, I am gonna have to disconnect my microphone and I will be using just the mic on the camera. Quick tip for tightening these, once you start to see the bracket bend a little bit and flex towards the back of the 530, I would stop there and you're good to go. If you're like me and you have a couple monitors already connected via HDMI, you may need to get a DisplayPort adapter that's going to convert your HDMI to a DisplayPort so you can connect one of your monitors or connect the GNS530 into a DisplayPort. So let me show you what that is real quick. So a DisplayPort adapter will have your HDMI and this will get connected from your monitor and on the other end will be a display port and this will go into your graphics card. So we're going to connect that up. I'm going to connect this into the back of my graphics card. So I hope this comes through, but that's how you're going to wire up your display port adapter to your HDMI. Now I haven't tested this using a display port adapter for the 530, so it's going to be a test to see if this is actually going to work. And now we have our USB cable that we're gonna plug in. Now with this, I don't need to have this go directly into my computer. I'm gonna plug it into my hub that I have here on the side. Lastly, we've got the power adapter, so make sure that you plug this into the back of your 530 first before you plug the power in. You don't wanna create any arcing if you were to have this plugged in first. All right, so we'll fire up the PC, hop on Flight Sim Builder's website, and see what we have to download. All right, so now that we have everything connected to our PC, we can now head over to the Flight Sim Builder website. Link will be down below in the description for that. Once you're here, the first thing that we need to do is to head over to the Instructions tab at the very top. Once you're on this page, this will give us all the various instructions for their avionics units, mounting brackets, and some of their DIY stuff. So for us, we need to download information for the GNS 530. At the very top, we will have the GNS 530 link. If you click on that, it will now open up the instructions page for the 530. At the top, this gives us some basic instructions on how to turn on and off the unit itself by just holding down the C button on the very top left. Below this will give us some installation instructions for the software that we need to download. So to start the process, we need to download the Flight Sim Builder Launcher application, which we can do by clicking on the link here. Once you have this downloaded, you will then run the launcher from your download location. We can choose to add a shortcut for Microsoft Flight Simulator or X-Plane because it is compatible with both. We can then hit Next, and then you would hit the Install button. Once you have this installed on your PC, the icon should appear on your desktop just like this. So now that we have the software downloaded, everything is connected to your 530, we now need to adjust our display settings to make sure that we have everything correct on our PC before we launch into Microsoft Flight Simulator. So let me show you how we're gonna do that. You're gonna head all the way down to the search bar and just start typing display. At the very top, we'll see duplicate or extend to a connected display. And here will show us all the displays that we're running on our PC. Now, if you're unsure of which display is which, you could always hit the identify button and it will populate that number on the bottom of your screen. Now you wanna make sure that you get all of your displays set up properly so it'll be easy to drag the pop out panel from your GNS 530 right down onto your physical GNS 530. So as you can see here, the third display is my small screen on the GNS 530. All I would need to do is to drag that down and put it where I want it to be. And then you'll hit the apply button over here on the left. Now, I'm not gonna mess with any of this because I've already set everything up exactly the way I want it. I just want you to be aware that when you connect the 530 to your system, it's gonna show up as an additional monitor. So if you have multiple monitors, it's probably gonna mess everything up for you and you're gonna to have to rearrange everything 
in this menu. Once you have all of your displays set up, we will then launch the Flight Sim Builder application and then get into Microsoft Flight Simulator. So let's take you through that right now. Okay, well, I just realized that my microphone was not on the entire time. So I apologize for that, everyone. Okay, so now that we got the Flight Sim Builder launcher on the screen, all we need to do is to hit the Start Microsoft Flight Simulator button like it tells us, and also select which version of Microsoft Flight Simulator you have. From here, we're just gonna hit Start Microsoft Flight Simulator, and let's see what happens. So a couple things happened when I clicked the Run Microsoft Flight Simulator on the Flight Sim Builder app here. And one of those things is we have now a command prompt window that is open. I'm not sure what that's for or if I can close it or not. And they don't really say anything in the instruction manual about this command prompt window popping up. So I'm not gonna close it. We're just gonna leave it open right now. The other thing that they don't mention anything about is the Flight Sim Builder launcher. Now, I'm not sure if this is specifically just a launcher or if this is an actual application that we need to keep running because it does say Sim Connected at the very bottom. So it looks like if you hit the X button on the top here, it closes the application. So let's let's load in here to a flight and see how this is going to operate. Okay, so now that we're in the cockpit, don't mind if you see any little bits of stuttering or something. It's probably because of the video recording and I have this on my big monitor. So let's see if we get some power in the aircraft here. What we need to do now is to pop out the Garmin panel by using right alt on your keyboard and your left mouse button and that should pop out the panel for us. All right, so you can see the pop out now. Now I'm just gonna drag this down here and then double click, and that should expand that on your screen. All right, so as you can see, it looks like everything is on. What I don't like is the taskbar at the bottom showing all of the tasks here. So I'm gonna see if we can get rid of that here in just a second, but uh, let's go ahead and hit the OK button works okay oh that is gorgeous so let's wait for it to get its position and then we'll go through a couple other things with it and see if it works right oh there we go all right so range wow that's cool change our calm frequencies Oh, it's very fluid. Change nav frequencies. Oh, that's awesome. Let's hit the swap. Swaps, fantastic. Oh man, CDI, your OBS button, messages. Oh, that's cool. Flight plan. You can enter your flight plan. Okay, so as you can see, everything is working beautifully on the display. But what I want to do is try to get rid of that taskbar that's on the bottom because that's really bugging me. And it also takes up valuable screen space. All right, so now let me walk you through the process of removing the taskbar on the bottom of the GNS 530. The first thing that we need to do is to go down to the search tab. And then you're going to type in taskbar. When you start typing in taskbar, the taskbar icon should appear at the very top. We're going to click on that, and this will open up some settings for your taskbar. Now, we can do this a couple different ways when you're in this menu. First way is to go right up to the top and disable the taskbar right here, and this will disable the taskbar on all of your monitors that you have. When you hover over the section with your mouse where the taskbar would be, it would then pop up so you can use it. But I don't want to do that because I still want the taskbar to be showing on my main monitor. I just don't want it to show on my alternate monitors. So if we scroll down a little bit, you will get to a section called multiple displays. When we're in this menu, here is where we can turn the taskbar off on all of our other displays. So we turn this off. The taskbar will still be on my main monitor. I really can't show you that right now, but if we take a look at our GNS 530, we now have removed the taskbar at the bottom. 
Now, the only other thing that I notice here is that I'm not able to put this in full screen mode. I'm not sure of how to actually do that. Okay, so I just figured out how to put this in full screen mode. For those of you who don't know, all you need to do on your keyboard is to use the Alt key plus the Enter while you were on that screen with your mouse cursor. We'll switch it into full screen mode. So let me show you how to do that, and I'll show you what the screen looks like once we get rid of all those extra little panels. All right, so here we are. We're going to hit... Make sure that you're on it with your mouse cursor, like you see, and then hit Alt and Enter, and that will now make that a full screen on your GNS 530. Wow, this is so cool. This is amazing. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, so that's the entire process on connecting the GNS 530 to your PC, as well as a couple tips and tricks as to remove the taskbar and to make it full screen so you have an unencumbered view of the GNS 530 now. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoyed today's content, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my Flight Simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.